I wake up screaming. It's not the pain. It's never the pain. You get used to that. It's the knowing that another piece of me is gone, scorched away, dissolved in acid or vaporized by some fancy alien ray gun. Doesn't matter. The nanites will put me back together. They always do, even when I wish they wouldn't. I'm lying in a crater again, the red soil baked to glass by the blast. The sky is the colour of bruises and smoke, and I can hear the aliens scrambling over the rocks above me, their whispers like knives sliding against one another. They think I'm dead or close enough. It's a mistake they've made before. A thin, bitter laugh bubbles up inside me. Congratulations, I mutter to no one in particular. You get to see me again. I push myself up, shards of glassy earth falling away from my skin as it knits back together and I stand, testing limbs that should be dust. I stretch and roll my shoulders. The nanites are good, I'll give them that. My body hums with the energy of ten women, each as angry as I am. When the first alien appears at the lip of the crater, it's already too late for them. It spots me and lets out a warbling cry, some signal to its kin, but it's interrupted by the brutal arc of my fist shattering its faceplate. The creature crumples. I don't even look down. The others are rushing in now. I let them come. Plasma bolts sizzle past me, some finding flesh, but none mattering for long. The nanites are already stitching things back together before the wounds even have time to bleed. It's almost funny, watching them try to kill me. Almost. But it, it's never funny when I think about what came before this. When I wasn't a weapon. When I was a person. Damn it. I can't even remember what my own laugh used to sound like before they turned me into this... thing. The memories start bubbling up again, but I crush them with the heel of my boot as I crush the skull of the next alien that comes my way. The nanites pulse in time with my anger, driving me forward. Every impact of my fists, every torn limb and shattered bone is like a heartbeat. Steady, relentless. They made me a soldier who couldn't die, but it turns out I'm also a soldier who can't stop, stop fighting. Not until they're all gone. I wasn't the only one, of course. There were others like me, other immortals. We were human once, prisoners of war, abducted by these damn aliens and pumped full of experimental tech until we were unkillable. They thought they'd make the perfect soldiers, soldiers who could conquer planets in their name, soldiers who wouldn't stop until every inch of the galaxy was theirs. They were half right. The mistake they made was thinking we'd fight for them. When we broke free, when we realised what they'd done to us, there was only one thing left that united us. Revenge. That thirst for blood that went bone deep. We tore through them, their cities and fleets, and we didn't stop, couldn't. It wasn't just about killing them anymore, it was about finding something to fight that could make us feel alive again. I step over the bodies, the red ground soaked darker with alien blood. There's a war cry on the horizon, their reinforcements. I can almost admire their stubbornness. Almost. If I had a heart that could still be touched by anything other than rage, maybe I'd even feel pity. But that died a long time ago, back when they took me apart and put me back together again and again, each time leaving a little less of me behind. There are only fragments now. Pieces of a woman who once had a name. I keep that name locked away, deep in the parts the nanites can't reach. It's the only thing they didn't get to take. I don't even know if I want to remember it. As the reinforcements close in, I can see their war machines stomping across the horizon. Spindly-legged behemoths bristling with weaponry. They open fire and I feel a flare of heat as one of the plasma blasts catches me in the chest, burning through skin and muscle in a blink. The pain should be overwhelming. Instead, it's just familiar. Like an old friend you stop trying to avoid because you knew they'd always find you. I grit my teeth, feeling the nanites surge to repair the damage, knitting tissue and bone with a speed that borders on cruelty. I push forward, sprinting towards the lead walker. The alien pilot inside sees me coming and fires again, a continuous stream of plasma bolts that shred my body into ribbons. But I keep going, even as I feel half my face melting away, my vision darkening on one side. I keep going because I know I can. I leap. For a moment I'm suspended in mid-air, weightless, as the world tilts and spins around me. I slam into the walker's cockpit, my fist crashing through the canopy and drag the pilot out. It's a small, insectoid thing, barely half my size and shrieking with a dozen mouths. I tear it apart before it can scream again. 
the rest scatter. It's a pattern I've come to expect. They don't have the same thirst for battle we do. They don't know what it's like to crave the fight, to need it. When you're unkillable, when you can't find rest in death, the only thing that comes close to peace is the struggle, the resistance, to stand against the impossible and make it bleed. But I wonder sometimes, as I stand surrounded by corpses that still twitch with residual nerve impulses, if there's an end to it, if I even want there to be. Because what would I do if there was nothing left to fight? What would we, the immortal soldiers, do if we ever ran out of wars? The thought terrifies me more than any weapon these aliens could wield. I climb onto the fallen walker, scanning the horizon. There's a planet in the distance, a world we haven't conquered yet. I feel the pull inside me, the urge to keep moving, to find another challenge, another fight. I know I'll keep doing this until the stars go dark. It's all I know how to do anymore. The nanites in my veins hum with the thrill of battle, and I start walking again, away from the ruins, the dead, and the past, toward the next war. Because I have to, because I'm already too far gone to turn back. And somewhere, in the back of my mind, I hear a whisper, a voice that could have once been mine, asking, what happens when there's no one left to kill? But I keep walking. I'll worry about that when the last enemy falls. Until then, I'm just a soldier with a taste for war and nothing to lose. Let the aliens send more armies. Let them bring their best. I'll be waiting. After all, I'm the last thing they'll ever see.